Now sing this with me. Come breathe upon me, oh breath of God. Come breathe upon me, the spirit of the living God. Come breathe upon me, oh breath of God. Come breathe upon me. Just sing that. Come breathe upon me, oh breath of God. Come breathe upon me, oh breath of God. Come breathe upon me, oh breath of God. Come breathe upon me. Come breathe upon me, O breath of God. Come breathe upon me, O breath of God. Come breathe upon me, O breath of God. Come breathe upon me. Come breathe upon me, O breath of God. Come breathe upon me, O breath of God. Come breathe upon me, O breath of God. Come breathe upon me. Breathe upon me, O breath of God. Come breathe upon me, O breath of God. Come breathe upon me, O breath of God. Come breathe upon me. Thank you for being the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. I need you more, more than yesterday. I need you, Lord, more than words can say. I need you more.
Thank you, Lord God. Yes, Thank you, Lord God. Someone's feet is being healed right now. Someone's hand, God's touching your hand right now. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. You're such a good God. Thank you, Lord God. She's leaving someone right now. Thank you, Father God. Oh, Lord, we just wait on you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Uh, thank you, Lord God. A headache's going right now. Thank you, Father. There's someone you have burning in, in like the middle of your back. God's healing that right now. That nerve damage is coming into alignment right now with the word of God. Complete healing. Thank you, Jesus. Someone, you're getting your joy back. Thank you, Jesus, for the joy of the Lord that's released right now. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God, that sciatic nerve is healed right now. In Jesus' name, man. no more radiating pain down your legs. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord God. I just hear God say that there's, there's some uncertainty about the future, but the Lord would say, just trust in me. Believe in me, for I am working out every situation. I'm making a path that you would not even believe. For I have called you in this hour and this time to stand up, and I will lead and guide you. I will set you on the right path. Your, your accounts will be paid in full. Everything will be taken care of. You're not stepping backwards, but the Lord would say that you're stepping forward, says the Lord. For restructuring has to happen for revival to come, says the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We just speak grace to the mountains in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. You're just a good, good day. A good, good God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Such a good God. Such a good God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. Such a good God. Thank you, Father God. Thank you. Glory to your name, O God. Glory to your name, O God. Thank you. There's none like you. None like you, Father God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. God is so good. God is so good. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord God. I just want to wait on God for a little bit longer. Just soak in that presence.
to suspend and travail we all look at the word travail like it's a bad word but if you if you break down the word travail travail actually means hope because as you're travailing as you're laboring as you're bringing something into existence you're hoping for the end result to take place and so God says before I'm going to bring you to a place of rejoicing. Before I'm going to bring you to a place that you're fed, he's going to suspend your hope. Because his main goal, his, his, his whole thing is to get you to be hungry and thirsty. Matthew 5 and 6 says, Blessed are those who are hungry and thirsty for, for righteousness, for they will be what? Satisfied or filled. So God will cause certain things to come along your way, certain things to happen that will suspend your hope because you want, you're going to have to dig deeper than what you did before. Amen. Because we have wells on the inside of us of the Word of God. We have wells of the Spirit of God on the inside of us waiting to break forth. 
We are called to be miracle makers. We are called to be the divine intervention of heaven's power on the earth. And so God will do what? He will suspend hope, but before he will bring to birth or bring forth the dream or the vision, he has to send a midwife. Someone say a midwife. I didn't understand what a midwife was until my wife and I recently got pregnant. I, 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 did, I, I thought I understood, but four weeks ago when I sat down with the midwife, this aha moment happened. <coughs> Not that I'm going to have a kid or, or something like that, but aha was that she had a plan. She knew how to get me from A to Z. Because I, 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 it just happened. I had a five year plan and, and five years did not include a kid. I still had a lot of traveling to do. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> not a year and a half, no. But God will send a midwife with a plan. And so it's important for us to identify the midwives for our dream and for our vision so that we operate in the full function of our calling and purpose on the earth. Genesis chapter 1 says that God created the heavens and the earth. When you break that down, everything that was in the earth was there already when he created the heavens and the earth. Genesis chapter 2 says that there was, what, void, formless, and darkness that covered the face of the earth, but the Spirit of the Lord hovered. So without purpose, there's void, there's formless, and there's darkness. And so God does what? He brings in, and in chapter 3, he said, let there be light. Let there be light is symbolic of Jesus walking into the room. Jesus walking into the earth. He finally gave what was in the earth purpose. And so God has called us to give things purpose. That's why God said to subdue, multiply, add, and he gave man the ability to name everything on the face of the earth. Why? Because if you know the character of a thing, then you know what to expect. And that's what a name does. I don't have to sit there and expect much out of a chair but to hold me up. I don't have to think much about a dog walking past me. I expect what I expect out of a dog. So when, 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 when we name something, we give it purpose. But until we name something as voidless, without form, it is darkness, it's loneliness, it's, it's, it's nothing to us. And so God gives us the ability to prophesy. Someone say prophesy. prophesy. To prophesy things into existence in our life and over our life. That is why there is the word of God. The word of God is a, an anointed divine message from God and that is prophecy. So here's something. When somebody prophesies to you, it must line up with the word of God. Amen. God's not going to say anything contrary to his word. He can't do it. It's, it's, it's virtually impossible. So in Exodus 34 and 10, when he says that I have called you to be a miracle and to do something that has not been produced or seen in the earth, he can't deviate from it. That means that every day of our lives, we are called to be a divine encounter of heaven on earth. That means that God has giving us everything in our spiritual DNA, in our life, to be a walking miracle. Amen. So that means that if I need something to multiply, I prophesy to it. If I need a path made straight, I prophesy to the path to be made straight. Prophecy is the in Revelation chapter 19 and 10, it says that the, that the testimony of Jesus is what? The spirit of prophecy. That means that since I have allowed Jesus to come into my life, the evidence of the foretelling of Jesus is already present. Someone look at your neighbor and say, you're a footprint for God. Footprint for God. So wherever you step, whatever you do, you are a walking footprint. You are leaving a trace of Jesus wherever you're at. 
And so God will suspend hope so that you realize what your purpose is. That you go deeper into the call of God. You go deeper into the word of God. When you pray something through, you're not sitting there begging God for something. You're actually searching the scripture to find word to pray it through. What do I mean? When, when it came time to buy us a car last year, I wanted it debt free. Because I knew I was eventually going to give the car away. So, when it came to getting the car, I looked up in Romans, it says, Oh, no man, nothing but love. So I sat there, and every time I seen a car that I wanted, I said, I owe no man nothing but love. And then I quoted 1 Peter chapter 5, that I cast all my cares upon the Lord because he cares for me. So I owe no man nothing but love, and you care for me, so you're going to give me this car. And I would lay hands on whatever car that I wanted. And I will never forget this. I, I was on the phone with someone, and they asked me, they said, Micah, you need a car. Yes, I do. How much money do you need? I told them how much money I needed. Within 30 minutes, the money was in my bank account. Amen. Because I am a walking miracle. I am a walking wow. footprint of the word of God. That is my calling. That is my DNA. So God will take and suspend hope so you can go deeper and get hungry and thirsty. David says this in Psalms. He says that, that my soul longs for you. It pants like the deer. My soul searches earnestly for you, Lord God. And so God will cause things to happen so you hunger for God. You thirst for God. You want God so much that you can taste God. And so even, even when you're about your day during work and stuff like that, how hungry are you to see God? How thirsty are you to see God? You know, I, I remember, um, I like red cherry. Um, I don't have them here. They're cherries. Uh, I can't explain it, but they're cherries. You don't have them. But I wanted them so much. <laughs> and I remember when I, when, when I finally I got a car and I could drive, I, I, and my mom and them always told me I couldn't eat a box of cherries. And I said, yes, I can. And she said, I couldn't. Well, finally I got a car, I went to the grocery store, I bought me a box of cherries. And they were gone for the weekend. I ate the whole box of cherries, and I got sick. <laughs> but I had a hunger for the cherries. <laughs> my wife is pregnant. She loves dominoes. <laughs> oh my goodness. So Tuesday, <laughs> even though I had soup and pasta and chicken defrosted for us Tuesday night, because I do the cooking, she needed her dominoes. <laughs> and then yesterday, she needed her McDonald's. I'm like, maybe we're being healthy. She's like, but I got a craving. What I'm trying to get you to understand, you will do anything to get to the Domino's, to get to the McDonald's. And I learned something, McDonald's delivers. <laughs> they don't do they that do. in America. <laughs> but how desperate are you for God? Even though the thing you're determined in has been suspended and you can't get to it, how desperate are you still to go after it? I remember when South, the South African Embassy told me there was no way I could get a visa that South Africa had enough missionaries and preachers. They denied my application like that. But I was so hungry for God. I said, God, you gave me this, you told me to go for it, and I'm going to get it done. I came to South Africa, God changed all the rules, and I'm able to get my visa for two years. But in January, I could have sat there and said, now this is not God. My hope had been deferred. My, my, and remember this, hope deferred does not mean denial. Amen. And I could have I just stayed back in America. I could have ignored it, but I kept, like a bulldog, I kept running after this thing and running after this thing, and I did this thing. And I'm here today, and my wife and I are going to have a kid, and it's going to be born in South Africa. 
because I didn't give up. People told me that I would never be able to preach the gospel, that I would never be able to preach in Bible colleges. I would never be on television and radio. I've been on the largest television network in America. I've been in, on radio in Kenya to over six million people. I've been on the largest Hispanic radio station, and now I'm about to be on the radio in Cape Town, South Africa. And what if I would have let those people tell me it was impossible? But I knew what God told me. Someone said, you gotta know. You gotta know. And keep on pressing. And keep on going. Because God has something much more in store for you. Amen? Amen. Let me pray for you. Father God, I thank you for this time. I thank you for this privilege. Father God, let them see that there are miracles. Make, you're a miracle-making God, that you've called them to prosper, that they're the head and not the tail, and that they're going to have hope like never before. And I thank you, Father God, that you are a way maker. And I thank you, Father God, that your peace rests upon them in your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And amen. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to hand it back over to my friend. I'll be down here if you want prayer or whatever. I never, what is your name? Marius. Marius, okay. See, two years and I still. <laughs> Thank you.